Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my PHP security tutorial. Back in part two of this tutorial, which is required viewing before you proceed, by the way, we created a registration page. And as I was creating it, I was pointing out some of the different ways we could fix it and make it better. Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna take some of the knowledge that we learned from part three of the PHP security tutorial and make this new user registration script much more secure. What are we gonna do? We're gonna require the user to put a user ID in. We're no longer gonna use the email address as the user ID. And we're gonna require that this user ID have a letter of both cases and at least a number and be at least eight characters long. And as we learned in part three of this tutorial series, often whenever people are told to do this, what they do is they have their user ID and password be the same. We're also gonna come in here and make sure that that does not happen. And on top of that, I'm gonna institute a CAPTCHA system to help block out brute force attacks from hackers. And as I had mentioned before, in regards to querying the database, how it is very good to end your query with a very restrictive value. I'm gonna show you how to use the state abbreviation last in your query. If you don't remember, it only will allow for a maximum of two characters, which is gonna make SQL injection much harder. So first off, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna show you how to get this CAPTCHA system set up and working. All you need to do is go to this address we have right here on the screen code.google.com apis recapture docs php.html you want to go to that website and if you do you're going to see exactly what's on the screen right here and this is so easy to set up what you need to do is come in here and click on recapture php library and then you're going to want to download this code right here and the only file that's actually required is this one that you see here on the screen, recapture lib.php. You're gonna to wanna to save that in a folder that you'll be able to get a hold of on your web server. So that's all you need to do is download it and then copy it to a place where you can locate it on the web server. That's all you need to do. Then you basically just have to follow the rules that are here on your screen, meaning, and I'm gonna show you exactly where to put this information here in a second. You're gonna to have to get a public key and how you do that is from this same exact page, you're gonna go over to sign up for an API key and click on that. And then you're gonna type in an email address and you do need a Google address here and a password. And they're gonna give you what is called a public key and a private key whenever you sign up for that. It's extremely simple, so I'm not gonna go into it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert the public key here and your public key here. And then on the code that's gonna lie on the server, you're gonna enter your private key. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do all this step by step so don't worry about it that's basically all you need to do this part right here is going to go into your HTML and this part right here is going to go on the server side and I'm going to show you how to do that so first thing we're going to need to do now that everything's going to be based off of user ID is to actually create a user ID field for the registration script and all this code is at newthinktank.com. I have a link in the underbar to the code. You can download it and do anything you want with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna base the user ID on the same restrictions we put on password. So I'm gonna come in here and actually copy the restrictions we have on the phone number, copy that, paste in here, except now check for a, and we're gonna put user ID in here, and we're gonna copy the restrictions we put on the password down here. We're gonna copy this regular expression, which I talked about previously. Basically all it's doing is requiring that there be one uppercase and at least one lowercase letter and a number, and also that it be six characters in length. Let's change that to eight to make this a little bit more restrictive. So that means we're going to have a minimum length of eight characters now in our user ID. Then you're also going to have to come in here to the post area and we're going to type in user ID instead of phone and come in here and type user ID instead of phone again. And then please enter a valid and we'll come in here and type in user ID. All right, that's all we had to do. Now we have that section set up for user IDs. And since we are already here in the password section, we're going to also, like I said before, require that the password not be equal to the user ID because that would stink. So we're gonna come in here to this section where it's checking to make sure that the password one and password two are equal to each other. And we're gonna put in other parentheses right there. We're gonna come in here, put and in, space. We're actually gonna copy this right here. Copy, paste, I love to copy and paste as much as humanly possible. And we're gonna say that we want password one to not be equal to user ID. Close that off, close off both those brackets. And if that is true, we're gonna send all this over to be escaped, else I'm actually 
going to move this down here and type in else if, else if, I'm gonna jump in here and copy this, copy, paste this in, and we're gonna put equals. So this is the test if password one is equal to user ID. We do not want that. And then we're gonna have to tell it what to do. And that's real simple because we're just gonna copy this. Copy, paste, your password cannot be equal to the user ID, all right? So that's gonna protect them from being able to have a user ID and password be the same. And then we're gonna close this off just like that. And then let the else handle the situation in which the passwords do not match. So that is all the changes we need to put inside of there. And then down here, right after please enter a valid password, this is where we're gonna put all of our CAPTCHA code. And where are we gonna do that? Are we gonna type all that out? Of course not. We're gonna come over here because they provide all this for us. And I'm just gonna copy from the require once on the web page that I pointed at before. And I'm not going to have an else statement actually here because I don't need that there. And then right in here before we get into checking that everything has been entered, I'm just gonna paste all that information in there. And then I like to clean this up a little bit. All right, everything else is fine. Here, you're gonna put your private key that you got from Google. I'm not gonna show you mine, sorry. And then here where it says what happens when the CAPTCHA was entered incorrectly, well, this actually kills, die, this function actually kills the script, which is gonna make your user retype everything in, and I think that's kind of mean. So instead, what I'm gonna do is just put this echo command out here. And again, we don't need the else statement in there. So if it was invalid, we're just gonna put this little thing in here. Failed to enter the CAPTCHA code, okay? Real easy. And then this if statement right here is closed off. And remember, we're creating a user ID and I'm gonna call it UI. Again, I'm keeping these kind of abstract as possible. So I definitely wanna check that a value has been entered in for UI, representing user ID. And then down here, remember, we don't care so much that the email address is right, we care more that they have a valid user ID. So we're gonna change this query right here to user ID and UI, right like that. And then we're gonna come down here where it says, sorry, there's an account signed to that email. We're gonna put to that user ID. And you could also check to make sure there aren't duplicate emails if you wanted to do that, but that's completely up to you. And then here's the query where we're gonna be entering all of the new information into the database. And from last time, you probably remember that I said it's better to always have a very restrictive end for your query. And the most restrictive, and this is to block SQL injection, because if we can only put in two characters in here and everything else is gonna be like, no, we will not accept it, that's gonna make it harder for a hacker to put malicious SQL in here. So to fix that up and make their life a little bit harder, what we're gonna do is just change this query up a little bit. And how we're gonna do that is take state out of here and instead put user ID inside of there. And then after work phone, we're gonna put state inside of there. You might be saying, well, wait a minute, you didn't put the user ID in the database. That's fine, we're gonna to get to that in one second. So we're just gonna come in here, user ID right there. And inside of here, we're gonna put quote, state. So now the state is going to be the last thing entered into the query. And then we need to come down into the form area and actually put in an area for them to enter user ID. And just so you know, if I was going to, I'm not going to jump into MySQL, but if I just wanted to create a new column in the table for users, what I would do, obviously I would just type in MySQL5 user MySQL admin dash p and then hit enter and it's gonna ask me for my password. I'm gonna type that in. And then I'm gonna type in hamdb because that's the name of my database I want to use. And then this is what I would type in, table users. And this is in my SQL, by the way. And then I would just say, I wanna add a new user and it's gonna be called user ID. And it's gonna have a variable number of characters, 20 in length. We're gonna require it, so we're gonna put not null inside of there and then put a semicolon at the end and then hit enter. And that's gonna create the new user ID part in my SQL. So that's all wonderful and great. And to make our life easy, we're just gonna copy this password thing right here because it fits exactly what we're looking to do. Copy, except of course we're gonna put user ID. And I'm gonna leave this of type password so that people don't see the password, but I leave that to you however you wanna do it. Give it the value user ID or the name for this variable. We'll leave everything else the same. And I'm gonna change this actually to something that actually makes a little bit more sense. Must contain a letter of both cases, a number and minimum length of eight characters, all right? 
And let's actually copy that into the password area as well. Now it's just a little description so that they can type in a user ID that actually is useful. And we're almost done. That's how awesome all this stuff is. And in my opinion, you should always use CAPTCHA systems because why not? They're simple. All right, so how are we going to do that? Are we going to type out all that code? Of course not. We're smart. We copy and paste. So we're going to jump over here. Google did the work for us. And we don't need to worry about this because we already have all that information saved. But we are going to have to copy right here, just so you can see exactly what I'm copying. I'm going to copy this right here, and I'm going to copy that right there. Right out of this, copy, zoom back out, up over here. And we're going to come in here, in the form area, and we're going to paste that in. And then right here is where you're going to put your public key. And of course, you're going to want to make sure you change permissions on this recaptcha lib.php file saved in your web directory or wherever you save it. And in case you forgot, you're probably going to have to type in sudo change mod 755 that allows them to execute it. Copy, paste, and then hit enter. And that would be in your terminal. And then that would give it its execution ability. And remember, just put your public key inside of here. And if you do all that, and of course save this guy, this is exactly what you're going to see on your screen. And let's just do one real fast. Mediawell.com, do three main, and then and there you go. And then next up, I'm going to get into sessions and how to secure them. But just to prove that it actually worked, I'm going to jump in over here to my terminal in my SQL. Clear scroll back so you can actually see this. And I'm going to zoom in even more. And select every user. And da 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 da. You can see Paul Paulson. Ba da 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 da. All that information was entered. Everything you can see right here is coded and encrypted, and the world's wonderful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.